All right. All right, welcome to the first leg of our Bordeaux to Mont Blanc bush trip. We're starting in Bordeaux wine country in the DA40. It's ready to fly. So let's get our panels real quick. We're gonna use this. We need the nav log via our map. We'll take a quick peek at that. We're starting at Olive Airfield. Yeah, pretty straight shot. It should be a shorter trip. This isn't a very long leg. We're just going out over the water, cutting back through, and ending back up, uh, landing at LFCH. Let's close that guy up. No bush talk radio today. Welcome, the beginning of your journey from the southwest of France to the majestic alpine peak of Mont Blanc. As you take flight from Bordeaux airfield, set a western heading, and continue until you reach the A63 motorway. So, we're going to start heading out uh, southwest, and we're looking for the highway. On the DA40 today, don't have a lot of time on this aircraft, so I'm kind of learning it as I go. Looks like flaps at takeoff. Um, that was one thing I remember about this plane, the fuel transfer. Kind of different. But no, I think we're good. Um, throw on idle. We can break off. Okay. Let's minimize that for now. Alright. I think we're clear. Start heading to our first POI. I'm gonna bring the throttle back a little bit. I don't like that being in the red. Get me back on track feature. Who who would actually need the get me back on track feature when you have the entire flight plan automatically loaded for you into the FMC on the second screen here? Let's climb to uh, like 2,000 feet. Should keep us uh, low enough to see what's going on. So we are in Bordeaux, we're in wine country. Sounds like we're gonna be coming up on the coast here in a little bit. And we see a lot of fields. The A63 Highway. And that's where I find it. We're going to follow it. Follow the A63 Southwest past a collection of small lakes. The road will bifurcate uh, the junction, take the branch that leads for west. Okay, so we follow it until it forks in the western branch. Easy. Is that a highway? No, probably not. <clears throat> That's the thing with uh, with bush trips, either rivers, highways. Um, I finished the Patagonia bush trip like last week in the X Cup. And man, if you could just stick to following rivers, um, you'd be in pretty good shape. Didn't have to worry about you know, all of a sudden needing to descend over mountains, just follow the valleys through. That was a nice trip. up on 2,000 feet. So let's start looking around. Do you guys see a highway? Yeah, I think I see something up here in the distance. Okay. 
you guys don't mind, we've got uh, beer here as well. That's why it's called Beer and Bush Trips. Drinking a hard cider. Angry Orchard. Green Apple. Tasty. Why would you mind? You're not on my plane. Anyways. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get under these these clouds. I want to stay VFR here, not, not end up in the IMC. Uh, there's our highway, I think. Sure, it looks like it. Right by that, that silo, that grain silo over there, probably. So we're going to cut over to that highway and then start heading, uh, start heading west and following it. This is just one such a great thing about uh, about bush trips, right? Like you, it really forces you to look at the terrain that you're flying over and familiarize yourself with the region. Really feel like you're exploring. You can't just uh, put on autopilot and cruise at 10,000 feet. I actually feel like I'm in France. Not really. All right, there's our highway. feet here. This plane does, it seems like it trims really easily. Um, the next cup could be a handful, but this is a pretty, pretty easy to fly, uh, predictable little airplane. Looks like it's fuel injected, so no, no carburetor to mess with. Um, no constant speed prop, which is kind of frustrating as I'm fighting with the RPM here. I, I wish it was a constant speed prop. Log again here. Follow the A63 southwest past a collection of small lakes on the highway. Ah, well, there's our small lakes up on the left. And the road will bifurcate. Junction, take the branch that leads farther west. Okay. Just gonna hang out for a bit. Let's try to get up to 2,000 feet. shop or something like that. But mostly farmland out here, man. Looks pretty chill. Ah, I see the highway splitting up here. Okay. Alright, so we're going to follow it west, which means that way. What are we doing after that? Eventually it's further west. Keep heading west across the waters of Basin Agro toward a peninsula bordering the Atlantic Ocean. Find your way to the Cap Ferret Lighthouse. Alright, so we're gonna head out to the ocean. Cool. Well, I don't see mountains anywhere, but I know this is supposed to be a pretty mountainous uh, bush trip, so I don't think we're going to see any on this leg, but I think we'll be up in the mountains before too long here. Maybe in the next leg. Alright, we'll 
level out at 2,000 feet. Sucker right to the ocean. You know, I was watching an old, uh, some reruns of an old podcast I used to watch ago now. I was a teenager then. It was called uh, Dignation. It was on the Revision 3 podcast network. One of the early podcast networks. Um, and it was Kevin and Alex. Yeah, so I was rewatching some episodes of that and I, I, I got the idea. I'm like, man, it's everything's better with some um, with some beers. That's what they did on their show, so I'm copying it a little bit. I'm flying an airplane, which is a bit different, but I see no harm in it. So yeah, if you ever want to watch old podcasts about tech crap from the 2000s, Dignation was, uh, was pretty good. It's a significant part of my childhood. For better or for worse. Probably, I would say for the better. Is that another airport down to our left? No, I don't think so. That's just a field. You see that black tarmac? I was wondering what that is. It's got to just be a field, but there's some kind of big facility there, huh? So yeah, the DA forty. I'm not. I'm not used to the feel of them on this aircraft. Um, you know, I'm used to on, on single engine planes. You switch from the left tank to the right tank, or what have you. Um, I don't think you do that on the DA forty. I think you just hit this fuel transfer pump and leave it on for a few minutes, and that feeds fuel from I don't know from one wing to the other wing. I guess. So we're keeping an eye on that. Our fuel looks. I think in some time we'll hit that fuel transfer. Even amount, maybe when it gets to the White House. So normally with this headset, I, uh, I usually have, a, I have one of these little personal fans. It's pretty handy, um, but I'm using the mic, so I think if I put my fan on right now, that would be really irritating. More irritating than the audio you're already getting. So I'm just going to suffer a little bit here. It's a pretty short leg. I think this, I think this is like, I don't know, maybe a 30-minute hop. Um, I think if you look off to the left there, that's actually the airport we're going to end up at. Uh, straight off the distance. But I think it's having us go out to this little sandbar peninsula thing first, and then we're going to wrap back around. So that's all right. <clears throat> nice little seaside town. Let's check out our nav log. So 
They're going to head, keep heading west across the water here uh, toward the peninsula bordering the Atlantic Ocean. All right. Find the way to the cap ferry. Dude, I used to have two ferrets. It was a pain in the butt. Dog's better. We have a dog now. It's a hell of a lot better. The ferrets were annoying. I mean, they were all right. Wouldn't do it again. Anyways, Cap Ferret Lighthouse. I would expect that to be the edge of the peninsula. I guess we'll see when we get closer. Get up to 2100. It's probably now pronounced Cap Ferry. It's probably Ferry. I'm guessing Ferry. There's our, uh, yeah, that's gotta be our destination. Yeah. Straight up on the left, see it. So we're gonna go out to the sandbar. That looks like sand dunes. Probably cut through the dunes back towards the, uh, towards the airport. It's the temperature outside. Three gallons per an hour, dude. Can you beat that? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> gallons remaining. Twenty-four gallons. We can one gallon. <laughs> These diamond planes are really impressive. For I'm cruising at three gallons per hour. That's that's pretty impressive. All right. How do you suppose I can? See? Oh, outside air temperature, 11 degrees Celsius. A little chilly. Don't have to wear car heat though. It's almost no wind, man. I'm not getting blown off. Thing. I think I saw like a two knot crossword. Nothing. Now watch me completely goof. <laughs> So, Lighthouse, where is this confetti lighthouse, man? Do you guys see a lighthouse? I would expect it to be at the edge. Um, maybe it's on the far side of this, this little peninsula we're coming up on. Hmm. Some dark clouds over there. boats out, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like boats. It 
So, I don't know. I still don't see a lighthouse, man. But I think we're coming up on our turn here soon. I think it pretty much just, you know, travel onto this peninsula, cut back through. What's, what's the next, uh, cap turn southeast and cross the waterway to the great dune of Pilla. As you pass over the top and dune in Europe, your path will carry you east across the sprawling greenery. Direct approach for Chen Akra Arkashon Airport. Alright. I wonder if I can get under these clouds a little bit. Yeah, I don't see a lighthouse, do you? Alright. Let's, uh, let's try to get down to like 1,200 feet. Maybe we can get under these clouds a little bit. How high do you think these sand dunes are? That might be a problem. Maybe 1,300. 1,300 feels safe. like rain, doesn't it? Tallest sand dunes in Europe, huh? Nice. Trying to descend a little bit because I really don't want to be in the middle of this cloud layer, but um, I also don't want to be too low for the tallest sand dunes in Europe either, so we'll see what happens. our runway. So let's start turning final there. Yeah, I really did not want to be in the middle of this. Just trying to cut through. So it's like somewhat, somewhat clear. Slow up a little bit. Start getting ready to put the flaps out. not feel comfortable in this in real life. That is uh, not great, but I think we're coming out the other side of it here. Uh, yep, I see the runway. Okay. Yeah, we need to get over a little bit. That's all right. I never switch fuel. What 
our fuel never really went down, did it? All right, we should probably turn the fuel pumps on. That seems like a good idea. Let's reduce power a little more. I want to slow up a little bit more. Let's throw out the flaps. Okay, there's the runway skip. Let's keep an eye on our speed. We're at 900, 900 feet. Busting out of the clouds. Number of pitch for throttle for attitude, I guess. So okay, I don't want to be ascending quite so sharply. I'm going to give it a little more throttle. Speed's good. I'm going to hold this. On landing lights off them, but that's interesting. Oh, my switch for my landing lights is in the fuel pump. All right, I'm gonna leave it as it is. So let's reduce throttle, get down a little more. I think we're pretty well lined up, huh? God, this feels, what am I at, 66 knots? This feels like they're um, landing in this, coming from uh, the X-Cub, where I'm landing at like 40, 40 knots. <laughs> All right, I can feel it sinking. The controls are definitely getting a bit sluggish, and we're almost stalling, so let's give it some power here. Okay, at least until we get across the threshold. This looks pretty good. I think I'm going to take it. Stall. 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 Wow. Stall. 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 Made it. All right, we're in McGeeve. McGeeve. LFC. That's the first leg of our uh, of our bush trip through France. So hopefully tomorrow, the next leg of our bush flight, another bush flight, another beer, and that's it.